It is Wednesday, May 25th in the MLB, and I'm Austin from Calling Our Shot. And I'm Logan from Calling Our Shot. And we are back. We got a special edition of this video. We got our favorite team total, two. Yes, two player props and one no one first inning coming your guys' way. You guys already know what to do. Mash that subscribe button. We had another profitable day yesterday, so if we're making you some money, hit that subscribe button. Also, drop a like. Maybe, maybe we are helping you out, and that also helps more people to see this video. I agree 100%, Logan, and we had a great day yesterday. Let's do a quick recap of it. Now, I do have to say our parlay of the day will be live on Odds Jam a little bit uh, later on this morning, and you probably want to tune in because yesterday we cashed out our parlay. Rays minus one and a half, no sweat bet, Angels minus one and a half. They made you sweat in the top of the ninth as they gave up two runs, still cashing that. And overall for our plays, a two and one day. So no complaints over here. We'll take it. We have the Rays minus 0.5. Great call, Logan, plus value too. Easy cash. I think they won that, what, the first five by two zero. And then Trout gets two singles. Like, that's what he does. The man's a legend. He's a robot. That's what he gets done. And then the Cubs versus Reds, Nerfy. Never stood a chance. Mally, thanks for nothing. He went out and hosted batting practice. Had a little bit of a... Had a little bit of bad luck on no run first innings the past couple days. So we got a little bit of special juju coming your guys' way. But either way, like I said, probably the day live on Ajim a little bit later this morning. Definitely go check it out. We got another good two-legger. And then I also have to shout out maybe Wound helping you make some money. If you want to become a COS All-Star, we love our All-Stars out there. The real MVPs, the reason we get up every single morning for these videos. And look, we thank you guys all so much for supporting the channel. Thank you guys again. Now, without further ado, subscribe if you're new. Logan, I'm going to throw it to you. Oh, I have one last note. We have our, our, our podcast is live later on this morning. We have a special guest nick the picker he's on twitter with like 70k followers i thought it was a really good podcast we talk about some mvp dark horses so definitely check it out it will be posted at 10 a.m eastern time later on this morning but logan without further ado i'm gonna give it to you then i got two player props so let's get it cooking yeah we, we got a good slate today and we're starting with a team total as you mentioned phillies versus braves and i'm taking the phillies team total over three and a half total runs currently minus 125 odds on, on barstool as austin's pulling it up right here 125, and this is one of those bets I play sooner rather than later. The books are probably going to juice it even more. So it's minus 125 on Barstool, a little bit worse value on other books. But this is why I use Oz Gym, because I want the best bang for my buck. So I placed it on, on Barstool. It's, you know, the Phillies have been bringing the bats to Atlanta, right? This is why I'm comfortable taking a team total. They've hit this line in both games of the series, and they're facing Charlie Morton today. Charlie Morton, 4.95 ERA, so with a roughly 5 ERA. It's going to be lots of hits and runs opportunities. Phillies are bringing the bats on the road. Most importantly, during the month of May, they're batting 280 on the road. That's that's really solid for, for a Phillies team that I've always, you know, half trusted on the road. I'm like, are they actually going to bring the offense today? Certainly. And several of this, these Phillies hitters have great splits versus Charlie Morton. I'm going to read you them. Bryce Harper, 350 versus Morton. Gene Segura, 263. Real Muto, 333. Bohm, 333. Odubel Herrera, 444 versus Morton. If they're getting production out of Odubel Herrera, this team, this team is uh, unstoppable virtually because he's, you know, one of their more inferior hitters. But you just, you just saw. I, I told you Harper, 350. He had so much damage last night, so he's swinging a scorching hot bat in Atlanta. Hope he can bring bring that bat for us again. Philly's offense is fifth in hits per game, so we love to see a team that's that's constantly getting those hits, constantly getting those base runners. Because I mean, at the end of the day, we can't go out and score the runs for them. We we just need those hits to to at least get the run opportunities, and the Phillies are doing that. Lastly, the Braves bullpen is providing a lot of opportunities late. Their three point three eight bullpen ERA to me is a little bit deceiving because last night. The Phillies scored three runs just against their bullpen, against Will Smith and Kenley Jansen. To me, the Braves bullpen is good on paper, but they usually like to choke games late. So I, I think there's going to be a, you know run, run opportunities all nine innings for, for us in this one. And I, I like taking the road Phillies. They've been getting it done so far in the month, month of May for this team total. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it. But Austin, get into your first of your two player props. Yeah, Logan, I like the pick because we've seen the uh, Phillies really good on the road. We saw them go into that Dodgers series earlier in May and absolutely just light up yeah. the field. So hopefully they can get it done for us. We just need four runs. Now I got two player props for you guys. The first one, starting with the man that's treated us nicely before. Trey Mancini, I'm taking his over, 0 0.5 singles, minus 125 on, Ce on Caesars. Obviously, he's a player for the Baltimore Orioles. And yes, this is just a singles prop. It's normally only available on Caesars and DraftKings, but I still like it. It's available on both those books. And, you know, FanDuel, if you want to take him to get a hit, I'm fine with that. Now, yesterday, Mancini didn't cash his prop, didn't get close. 0 for 5, 2 Ks from the day. And I had a lot of plate appearances. I think he got pinch hit at the end of the game or a pinch run. And then obviously again went to extras and he didn't get up in his second, his sixth at bat. But still, look at Mancini on the season, whole body of work, 
293, 41 games played, 46 hits, 38 of them being singles. And what I like to call him, bounce back Trey, because he has 11 games this season without a hit, with the 11th being yesterday. And in the previous 10 games, he had a single in all the rest of the previous 10. So he's perfect 10 no on this prop when he doesn't get a hit the previous day. And I think he's going to get it done. Now, Mancini has had some struggles against the Yankees. I mean, not terrible. Still 265, which would be a lot of hitters, a very good year. But he's batting 265 versus them in 12 games, 13 hits, 11 of them being singles. Now, he has gone hitless. So, yeah, I talked about 11 games without a hit. Four of those games were against the Yankees with the fourth one being yesterday. And all the previous three, like I said, always had a single the next day. My only concern, you know, well, well I have to have to say, Mancini's not a guy that's swinging for fences. There's a reason he only has three home runs. He had a lot of home runs last year. But he just doesn't have a ton of home runs. Just trying to get on base. This guy that bats number two normally in the offense. And so he's just trying to get on base, get the guys that are batting clean up third, fourth, fifth, kind of get those guys some RBI chances. And that's what he's been doing all year long. My only concern with Mancini is him not playing today. He really hasn't had a day off of rest. Now, Caesars is nice because they will avoid the bet if, if Mancini doesn't play or doesn't start. Now, I know some books like FanDuel will grade it as a loss if he doesn't start, comes up for one at-bat, and then gets out in that at-bat. So that's why I normally avoid FanDuel anyways for batter props, but I like Mancini. But let's say Mancini doesn't play. You know, we at least need a backup. So that tra- segues me into my next pick. First, I do want to pull up our Odds Jam, our supporter. Odds Jam, I just have to pull up. Hey, look, Ryan Mountcastle, we, we love you, man. Uh, Mancini, minus 125 on Caesars. And then, obviously, this is my next one. We're going with Julio Urias. I'm taking this over 15 and a half pitching outs, minus 121 on Caesars. Now, uh, we see only Caesars with the line. I imagine DraftKings and FanDuel will post the line at 15 and a half a little bit later on uh, this morning. Now, we do see prize picks at 17 and a half. I, mean, I probably wouldn't take it. In my opinion, though, Urias is going five or six innings pitch. So he's either cashing, not cashing 15 and a half, or he's cashing both 15 and a half and 17 and a half. That's just kind of what they do. They don't let, you know, Urias, even if Urias is pitching a gem, don't normally let him go past six innings pitch. Now, his two starts against Washington last year, who he's taken on the Nationals today, 5.2 innings pitch and six innings pitch. So cashing it in both games last year. And obviously, we have to talk about Urias. He's not a strikeout specialist. You go to look at his strikeout prop, probably three and a half, four and a half. He's a pitch to contact guy. And sometimes those pitch to contact guys can just start right, just getting runs like or getting hits. I'm just taking a step back. They just get people to pitch in the quick, easy out, some one pitch, two pitch at bats, which is exactly what we'd like to see out of the Nationals offense. Now we look at Urias's last five starts, put it in terms of outs. It's at 15, 18, 18, 18, 18 outs. So hitting it in four of the five games, we saw his last most recent start. He went under. He obviously only had 15 outs losing on the hook. He only faced 17 batters in that one. He threw 80 pitches. Urias isn't going to go out there and throw 110 pitches. That's not what he's going to do. He's going to throw roughly 75 to 85 max. And look, he he only faced 17 batters. Got majority of them out because he had 15 outs, but he did throw 80 pitches. It was against his second matchup and consecutively against the Phillies. So obviously they had just seen his stuff and they kind of knew what pitches to expect, what pitches to lay off of. This Nationals team hasn't seen him all year long. We also have to think about two pitch to contact guys that just went up against the Nationals. Fran Valdez, Taiwan Walker, both guys went seven innings pitch. Didn't have a ton of strikeouts. Neither of those two guys are strikeout specialists. Both pitched to contact. Both easily surpassed this line. I think Urias can get it done. Also, my last note, I didn't put it as a note on the screen, but the Nationals ground out into the most double plays in the MLB. The absolute most. The only concern is the Nationals are fourth in batting batting average and balls in play, but still it's a team that's going to have a lot of grounders, and if we can get some double plays potential, like I said, they ground out in the most in the MLB. I think we can do that, and we should see Urias do pretty well today. So I'm riding with him over 15 and a half outs. I like it, and that's what we're riding with. But, Logan, without further ado, we need some good vibes, and let's yeah. bring it out because we are doing it. It is Nerfy Nation time, and we desperately – need the music we needed it we've been down bad the past couple days it's not what we want to be doing for nerfy nation so of course coming back with the winner today we just absolutely need it now people yeah. people say to fade them you know what we're 27 and 18 on nerfies we just have hit a little bit of a cold spell but that ends today and we're going with a spicy one i don't really think it's that spicy we're going with drum roll please Mariners Athletics, we're going no run first inning in that one, minus 130 on Caesar Sportsbook. As I pull up an uh, odd jam over here, we see a lot of differing values, minus 130 Caesars, even see some books at minus 150, which I don't know if I necessarily would play a minus 150 prop, but we still have faith in it. We're bouncing back. The Nerfy gods are going to be on our side today. Now we think about, obviously, this one. We have two starting pitchers. We have Robbie Ray going up for 
the uh, Mariners today, and he's been very solid versus the Nerfy this year. He's been what, like eight and one towards Nerfy. Mm -hmm. Been a very guy now. There is concern. Robbie Ray does throw it very hard, so you could lead to some, you know, home runs. But I'm not going to count on that today. He's going up against the Athletics offense that is really struggling. And Robbie Ray, you look at the Athletics tenth and first inning runs, but they're 28th in hits and runs. So I think Robbie Ray can get it done for his side of the mound. What about the other side, Logan? Right. So this is interesting, right? We've got we got Robbie Ray, who's been great on the nerf. He's iffy on the on the ERA stats. Paul Blackburn's the exact opposite. Paul Blackburn's coming in with a 1.91 ERA. That's amazing to have an under two ERA on the year. Only a 0.97 whip. Six only six walks and 42 and, and one thirds innings pitch. He's gonna he's really gonna challenge these these uh, Seattle Mariners bats, but. Paul Blackburn, four and four on the Nerfy. So that's a that's a little shaky, right? You, we have to prevent present all the evidence. So he's about he's 50-50 on the Nerfy versus Yerfy, but he has faced a lot of good offenses in those in a lot of those games. For what it's worth, Seattle's offense, well, they're ninth in first inning runs. So they're a top 10 uh first inning run score team, but they did just Yerfy yesterday. I'm I'm kind of banking on with these two really you know star pitchers. I mean, honestly, the best star pitchers on each team. I, I'm I'm banking on the Nerfy today. The value isn't incredibly juiced. I'm feel comfortable laying it. If we want to talk about you know others we might have looked at, this isn't a, a tremendous Nerfy slant. I'm not going to lie to you, but I did look at the Padres game. You you Darvish scares me a little bit, but that's why we didn't pick that one. I think this one stands a really good chance of cashing. Paul Blackburn's going to get us our three outs. Robbie Ray's going to get us his three outs. We're going to finally wave the flags because it's been a hot minute. We absolutely deserve this. And like we said, Paul Backrin, four for four to the Nerfy. But, you know, a guy that was due a, year, a Nerfy yesterday, Bo Brisky, Yerfy Nations, the number one supporter, he got yeah. the Nerfy. So if he can do it, Blackburn can do it. We're waving these flags because the flags have been <laughs> half staff. It's been it's a down bad central. Yeah. But we're going to get after it today. Those are our four plays. Normally we don't do four, but hopefully the player props can treat us nicely and then yeah. we will uh, get after. Let's bring out the brooms. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Just a reminder. Our podcast live 10 a.m. Eastern time. Go check it out. Also, our weekly live stream will be live 6 p.m. Eastern time talking all about Heat versus Celtics tonight. Thank you guys as always. It's been Austin. It's been Logan. We will catch you guys in the next one.